Hello everyone, this is In Game Arts. This is something I've been wanting to do for a little bit here, but I really didn't have the setup or the means or just the opportunity, but it all came kind of worked out so I could sit down and sit, uh, talk about my entire collection. And this is something that people have requested a few times about wanting to see my entire collection. And I figured since with the new setup, camera pointing down and stuff like that, new table to be able to be able to give you a good frontal view of the games and everything like that i figured this was a good opportunity to finally do this now i'm going to start with playstation 4 playstation 4 is my all-time most favorite console generation and it is the generation i have the most games for and i do want to do a bit of disclaimers in this video i do know i have like over 700 plus games i'll probably be doing like 60 at a time at a part just because trying to cover them all in one video is going to be a ginormous video Secondly, I will be trying to do my best to give you guys some information on every release, physical copy that I will be covering. I don't know. I don't know every single game. I don't know every single information, but I will try to provide as much information that I can do with memory in this video. So that way, this video is not just me showing you games, but also can be informative and information-wise. So nextly is that. This collection is going to mostly the prize of games that I find the most interesting. So you're not going to really find a lot of fighting games or shoot 'em ups and so on and so forth. But you're going to find a lot more like boomer shooters, metrovanias, tactical, turn-based kind of style games. As well as that uh, I'm a big fan of indie games. And not to say I don't have AAA games, but you're going to find a lot of in smaller indie games and games you've probably never heard of or seen of. And I hope this can be an interesting video so you can just see games you never even knew they got existed. As well as I do buy a lot of imports from outside aside from not only Europe but also Asia, Japan, China, wherever. If anywhere is, is it a physical copy, I'm going to try my best to get it. As well as I do try to hunt down the most updated, most complete versions of physical games of PlayStation, Sony, Nintendo, you name it. Now, I'm sure you're getting tired of me talking, so let's go and jump right into it. Now, you're going to be wondering why this is going to be all mixed up, is that I had to take all my games off my shelf to do redo my flooring, and then we had to put the shit games back up, and then the, the there was a delay, and then I had to put all the games, take the games off again, and put it back up, so I didn't have to have time to put it all in alphabetical order, and I didn't want to have to do it twice, so that's why the games were all shuffled up. Some of them are put together in their region, in the correct spacing, but you're going to be confused why I may be covering an A game one minute, and covering a, maybe a W game next minute. And it's just because I haven't got around to refixing it. It's been something I wanted to do, and I figured, hey, it's all mixed up. Might as well just do this now. All right, stop talking to you. In game arts, let's cover it. The first one is a Sega Genesis Classic Collection. Now, I've covered, I play, I messed around with this a little bit. Uh, I don't really know like, strictly how much this has improved from the original work of the games, but I am a little disappointed that it has like over 50, which I think a lot they could have fit a lot more games on this. I remember really being a little disappointed, and it doesn't actually come with a lot of the Sega Genesis games. Like uh, it doesn't come with like every single Sonic game. I know it has like maybe Sonic 1 and 2, and that's about it. So that was very surprising that how little the game actually has the actual content inside the game. Uh, just certain games missing and stuff like that. So I just... I don't really know too much information, but from what little I've played, it does seem like it's named the original games and they all work and generally named, it's a good little game to pick up. Moving on, we have Shanti and the Pirate's Curse. I'm sorry about the glare. I'm trying to still find a perfect area for my camera position and everything. This is a limit run physical release. This is a way forward. Uh... I played this a little bit. I know it is more up to date. I don't know if it's the most up to date physical copy out there, uh, but it generally worked. I remember covering it. Did I cover this game? I think I have, and it generally worked pretty good. It's a good little game to have on your shelf. It's a Metrovania, which is generally something I look for, and it's a very good character and a very good music story and setup. If you're into those kind of 2D sprite games, my Metrovanias definitely worth pick up but i do believe this is getting quite expensive because this is a limit run and i do believe this is before they start doing pre-orders i think there is a set number of these can't quite remember exactly next one Ash astro knight i've yet to play this one this one caught my attention uh this one uh is another metrovania it's got kind of like a uh Two, two bit kind of style or one bit exactly it's all on black and white and stuff like that i just got my attention because i love sprite graphics and i love simplicity and i just love just seeing the uh indie games and i like trying to buy them and support them and everything like that because they just intrigue me the most so i hope that someday i sit down and play this one it did get shipped to get a little damage at the top here I was a little disappointed when that came in but then i'm still happy to have it 
another limited run game. We have Enclave HD. It's like a classic uh, RPG style game. Again, it's a limited run game, so it's going to be quite hard to get a copy eventually for you guys and everything like that. But overall, I still wanted to pick it up and check it out. I haven't yet to mess with it. I do know it's a little bit more updated on this compared to the thing. Thing, if you thing, it is, it's more updated. I can't remember if it has any updates available. I'm not entirely sure about that, but for the most part, hey, I mean, I'm happy to have it and be able to check it out at some point. Sorry if I'm not bringing them all up to the camera. It's going to get really exhausting going through over over 700 games doing that like that. But Ruby Rawi, Aerofell. I know this is like a Rooster Teeth uh, kind of project, like Red versus Blue and stuff like that. This is another little Rimmit Run production kind of game. Uh, if you didn't notice, I pick up a lot of them run games and stuff like that. It's not really FOMO or anything like that. If I'm not interested in the game, I won't buy it. But for the most part, I, like I said, I love these indie random games and stuff like that. So generally, I do pick them all up just because it's not because of FOMO or feel like I'm missing out. It's just because I love these kinds of games, these smaller kind of stuff. I don't know if this is a Metrovania. I think it's just a side scroller, like hack and slash almost. Haven't played it, haven't tested it, know nothing really about it. But again, I love picking that kind of stuff up. This is, I think, my first import, and this is Front Mission First. This is a uh, main uh, Japan or Asia version of the game. Uh, there's no American release right now. I think it's getting a American release, but only on PS5. So if you want a PS4 version, you had to import it. And if, like I said, I, I, I hunt down every PS4 game I can possibly find just because it's my favorite console generation, and I really want it on my shelf. <laughs> they. I haven't played it yet. I don't know. I've only played the PS1 game of Front Mission, a little bit of it, so I don't know the original game, but this is one I'm definitely into. It's more of a tactical RPG kind of style game. Moving on, we have another limited run. We have Curse of the Dead, Go Dead Gods. Uh, this is like a roguelike kind of style game. It, it just had my attention. That's usually. I do like roguelikes, I do like Metrovanias and stuff like that, so this was a must pick up for me. <laughs> I do know this what got my attention was another game called Dead Cells, and this game has the some of its at, like stuffs in Dead Cell is from this game, like some items you can pick up and stuff like that. There's other there's other games and stuff like that that they included like little Easter eggs and stuff. Haven't messed with it, so I don't really know much about it. This one going under. This one grabbed my attention because I love the art style. I like the main cartoony kind of pre presentation and stuff like that. I don't really know what the premises of the game is. I do know you're like working in some business office place and stuff. And you're like going deeper into the corporate chain or something like that. Again, I'm, I'm spitballing on this. I just remember reading something a long ago about that kind of information. Can't really say I know much. I've been wanting to mess around with it, but I just haven't got around a chance. I really want to check it out because it looks really interesting. Next one is another limit run game is Blood Roots. This one got my attention because apparently it's like a one hit kill kind of mechanic. Again, it's another small indie game which always intrigues me. I love these kinds of indie small weird games. I always try to pick them up when I can if it intrigues me enough. <clears throat> I just I love supporting it. Man. It just it has an interesting like grab random gear and stuff like that. And it's a one hit kill, one hit kill enemies, and you can die with one hit. So you gotta try to do these perfect runs and stuff like that. I messed around with it a little bit. It really got my attention. I want to play more of it when I can ever get the back into the groove of playing video games. Maybe doing these videos and cover these games will get my intrigue again. Next one, this one grabbed my attention massively. Was the shady part of me? I really like these kinds of like abstract kind of style games or emotional journeys and stuff like that you self-discoveries and stuff like that they're very emotional and very main experience driven kind of experiences and i just i don't know i find that very fascinating like the, it's like almost playing like something like limbo or inside and stuff where but it's more of like a as i said self-discovery and everything like that and seeing other parts of you it's i don't know these kind of games fascinate me some of them are just not uh I try to look for ones that are very unique in its design. There are a lot of these kinds of games. Not to say that they're bad or anything like that. But a lot of them, I don't know. They're just more of like a walking simulator. If they don't got some like puzzles and some kind of uh, turmoil that you have to try to survive and discover. I don't know. It doesn't really intrigue me. But this, I think, has some puzzles and stuff like that. That's what got drew me to it. And as I said, I just love the art style and everything. It's probably not easy to see in the uh, camera. 
Next one is one I just recently picked up was Tachu, Tachu, Luna Knight. So I'm probably getting that completely wrong. I'm going to get a lot of names wrong here. This is another import, Asian import. From my understanding, there's no other way to get a physical copy. It's a Metrovania. I do know this game was like the, the original game is like a shoot 'em up. And I just saw this and I was like, you know what? So uh, Metrovania and those are always, <laughs> I always pick those up and put them on my shelf. I love Metrovanias. I, if ever I can get it some free time and get it back to the groove of gaming, I'll gladly play another Metrovania anytime. This one has me very intrigued. I've heard some many good things that it's actually a very good, how do you say, uh, spin off or different genre for the shoot 'em up genre of Tashua. I'm, I hope I'm getting, I doubt I'm getting that right. But again, I have yet to play it. I've been wanting to. Another one that I really got my attention was Galaxy of Pen and Paper Plus One Edition. It's basically like a Dungeons and Dragons where you play like characters at a table and you like do build your characters and they make decisions and stuff like that. And it's like a single player experience, it could, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I I got this pretty cheap. I I was doing some orders from Play Asia and I was like doing like they were doing a thing where you have to like get a hundred uh, get a hundred dollars and get free shipping. And this was like going for like nine dollars at the time. So I was like, you know what? That's not bad. <laughs> so I'll just pick this up. has my attention. I think it's kind of neat. Again, I try to support these kinds of games. And I love sprite graphics. And I love games that do a little bit of weird stuff. Next one is Titanfall 2. I actually have yet to beat this game. I heard the campaign is phenomenal. I have actually played a little bit of the campaign. And it intrigues me. I just remember it being hearing that the campaign's really short. And that worries me. Because if I really like the campaign, I would really like to play it. I know I bought this used. I do know that. Uh, I came across it, and I was like, you know what, I'll pick it up. Because I, I, usually, like I said, I don't really buy AAA stuff much anymore. If I'm going to buy one, I, buy, I usually buy it used, or I just wait for it's really, really cheap. I just, unless it's indie, I don't really go out of my way much anymore. Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. If you don't know, that's what my name, my, my actual first name is Travis. Most everyone just calls me TJ. This is the complete edition. This is another import, Asian Japan import. I thought that was interesting, and I do believe there was no updates for the time I made this video for this. This is the complete version of this game. So I just saw it. I went ahead and imported because I thought it was interesting, and I like the art style. I don't know nothing about it. I think it's kind of like an arcadey style game. Not entirely sure. I don't know if this is part of the other, like, No More Heroes uh uh, subclass games. I don't know. I don't really keep up with the stuff I mentioned anymore. <laughs> Next one, we have Super Meat Boy. This is, I think, the original one. I think it is. Like, there's a, there's two, like the Super Meat Boy Forever. Again, this is a limit run version. There is a PAL version. I think the PAL version had a small little update available, while this one, I believe, doesn't have an update available. It's the most update complete version of Super Meat Boy on a physical copy. Again, I love these kinds of games. This is from the same creator who made Binding of Isaac or the card game I've been recently playing, uh, Binding of Isaac for Souls. So, again, I guess he, his games just really draw my attention. So, Next one is Trials of Cold Steel 4. I've yet to play this one. I've actually only played the first and second one, and I haven't beat the second one. I got like really close to the uh, beating the second one and kind of like fell out of it. I don't know. I do have the PS5 version of this game, so I've definitely, if I'm going to play it, I'll probably play the PS5 version before the PS4 version, because I'm sure the PS5 version is more up-to-date and stuff like that, but I'm happy to have the PS4 version on my shelf. Always happy to have that. I don't know. Just Have you yet to play it? I heard... I mean, I've played the first one. Very good game. Second one was very good as well. It just didn't... Something came up. Something got... Pulled me away from it. And I would definitely like to play more of them. Moving on to Trine 4, the uh, Trine Ultimate Collection, which comes with Trine 1, 2, 3, and 4, all on one disc. This does complete with most of them completely on disc, but some of them, I think like the 4, and I think 3 has an update. But the rest of the two are completely, all DLC and stuff like that are on the disc. From my memory, it is still a good physical copy. If you have yet to buy it, it is definitely well worth, well worth to put on your collection. Because with four games on one disc, and these are good little 2D side-scrolling puzzle games. And they got uh, four-player support offline. And I'm always for offline support gaming, where you can play with friends and family and stuff like that. 
I do want to point out, I will mention games that may not support full English and stuff like that. And I will also mention games that I know don't work unless you have an internet connection. Every game I've covered so far, I know for a fact can be worked and played completely offline with an unregistered account. So you don't need to connect the internet or update it or anything like that. Next one, we got Super Robot Wars 30th Anniversary Edition. You have to play any of the Super Robot War games. I, ha I, I believe I have them all right now on PlayStation 4. This, again, is an import. This is not available on in the U.S. And I don't even think it's available to buy digitally in the U.S. The only way you can get this game to be able to play in the U.S. or maybe even Europe, I'm not sure about that, is to import a physical copy. Or, of course, make a PSN account that's in the Japan region that will allow you to download it. But if you don't want to do that, you just want to have... Don't have to use one account. This is the only... From my understanding, the only way. They're like a tactical game where you have like characters from other franchises come together and make one story. But I do know they did like this, this Super Bowl about Wars 30th anniversary stuff. I think this is all from the original characters they usually put in their games. Moving on, we have Super War Super Robot Wars V. Again, it's the same thing. Uh, it's another kind of like a, a tactical per turn based kind of style game. If you have to play a single one of them, been wanting to, but just haven't got around to it. It's happy to have it on my shelf. Moving on, we have this war of mine, the little ones. Now I do know that there is a more updated physical version on the Switch. I know I know it's not available on the PS4. So I've been wanting to pick up the uh, <clears throat> Switch version because I think it's more updated and it's got more of the, the last bit of DLC on the cartridge. But this is a very good game. This is like a survival kind of style, roguelike style game where you try to <clears throat> sorry, get help survivors and stuff like that that are steering a war. It's a different perspective. Usually games take place where you're the soldier doing the fighting and stuff like that. And you usually try to save the civilians that are hiding in their buildings and stuff like that. But this game, you actually are playing the survivors. You're the civilians in buildings trying to survive a war going on. It's a very interesting game. I just I think it's a different, neat idea. I always like games. Like I said, I love indie games. I love It's not necessarily indie because it's from Deep Silver, but you get what I'm saying is that these smaller games. I mean, moving on, we have Shovel Knight. Now, this is only the base game. This does not come with any of the DLC or expansions or most of the updates. So it's very disappointing that we only got the updated version of this game physically. The Treasure Trove Edition was only available on Switch. It was going to come out on PlayStation as well, but they canceled it. Hugely disappointed. I'm hoping that another company will pick it up, like Limited Run or whoever, Fan Gamer, to release a new updated physical version for PlayStation. I mean, I do have the Switch version, but I, I like to have a... I, I don't know. I love PlayStation 4. I want every physical game that I can get on PlayStation 4. We got Shin Megami Tensei 3, Nectarine, uh, HD Remaster. I've yet to play this. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily have the biggest fan of Shin Megami Tensei games. I don't know. They just don't click with me, like Persona games and stuff like that. I've played them, but I just never really got ultimately into them they never really clicked with me there are there are an interesting idea and concept but they're just i guess not for me i mean maybe one of these days i can really try to sit down and really sit down and play it moving on we have shanti risky's revenge director's cut a limited run game this is a uh, uh, again shanti it's a metrovania kind of style game uh, I mean, it's just the. This is the sequel to the first one that came out on the Game Boy Color. So this one is going to be a little bit lower brow compared to the uh, pirate. Uh, sorry, Pirates Curse one. So this one's not as like fancy as that one. This is the second game in the series. So again, I'm happy to have it. Again, it's a limited run, so it's going to be quite expensive if you're going to want to get a pick up a copy in the future. Next one we have Shadow Shadows of the Atom. Uh, again, it's a limit run. I believe this was a limit run uh, games. It doesn't have a limit run written on it. So I think it was distributed by limit run, but it wasn't like produced by limit run. I have yet to play it. I generally like these t smaller uh, RP uh, classic RPG style, JRPG style looking games the sprite graphics and stuff like that. It got my attention. So I really wanted to pick it up and can't remember if it exactly was from limit run, but I believe it was and I'm happy to have it on my shelf. Another one, uh, Shadows Awakening. I th uh, I believe this is like a Diablo-esque style game. I'm not actually totally sure. I know I bought this one used. 
I just came across it. Yep, there's the receipt. I usually like to keep the receipts in my game so I can see how much I paid for it. Let's see, I paid uh, 12 bucks for this. <laughs> Not bad. I just picked it up. I just saw it. And I was like, you know what? I don't have this on my shelf. I'll, I'll check it out. But I haven't played it, but I was like, that's another game I don't have. Shadow of the Colossus remake from Blue Point Games. I've actually never played Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, uh, I've played the PS2 version. I know the whole story. I've seen it multiple times. So, again, if you don't know, I am not a fan of huge open world games. So this game does not intrigue me. It didn't intrigue me back then. It still doesn't intrigue me now. I'm not into huge open world games. And I am well aware that this is the only thing you have to interact with. You just basically run to the next Titan or Colossus. And you fight that. Then you're going to run all the way to the next one. Fight that one. Then run all the way to the next one to fight that one. And I'm not that enamoric on giant enemies generally i'm not the biggest fan of giant enormous enemies because they're usually the most boring to, to fight in video games but i've always picked them up i'm always supportive of it and i, I don't i don't necessarily play it but i do love the idea and i love the concept of the game i just don't enjoy open world games Moving on, we got Knights of Pen and Paper plus one deluxe deluxe edition. I recently got this game. It's a it's the first game in the pen and paper of like the game I covered recently on this in this channel. It's like the Galaxy thing, Galaxy whatever I can't remember. Where you're playing a Dungeons and Dragons kind of style game, and again you're just working with a party and stuff like that. I am disappointed that this only got released on PlayStation 4, while the Switch version got the first and second one, I believe, on one cartridge, while the PS4 version only came with one game, which is utter BS. I would have loved to have both of them on one disc, but I don't know why there is lately this mistreatment of, of PlayStation physical games. Moving on, we got The Order 1886, a game that... They had a rough time at its start, but a lot of people have come around about it, that it's actually fairly good if you can get it cheap. I think I bought this one day one, actually. This is like when I had my first PlayStation 4 and stuff like that. The only biggest problem about this game is the letterboxing of the uh, gameplay. We got these little letterboxing where it covers up portion of the screen, so you got the full screen. That's the only downside of the game. The rest of the game is short, but it's a very enjoyable game. The QTEs don't really bug me too much. But I've never been a big against QTEs. I just it's just how it's just how how it's implemented into a game. Next one we have Eldest Souls. I don't know anything about this. This is I think yeah it's another limit run game. I picked it up because it seemed interesting. I do know if it comes with some of the DLC on the disc, but I don't know if it comes with all of it or if there's even an update. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know much about it. I really wish... I know it's a, like a boss kind of game. I don't know. I really don't... I'm spitballing now. I don't really know. I, I just saw it. I thought it looked interesting. I liked the sprite graphics and stuff like that. And it mainly grew me to it. Em Embers of Memorium is another limit run game. Again, I, I just... I pick it up because I, I, I know it's a Metrovania kind of style game. Again, you tell me something's a Metrovania, I'm picking it up. <laughs> or at least I'm going to try. I... Don't know much about it. I have yet to play it. I've been wanting to. I, my backlog is building up with so many Metrovanias I want to play. It looks interesting. I know you like switch between colors from like white and dark and stuff like that. And it allows you to go across certain paths or do certain actions. I don't know. It got my attention. So I thought it was interesting. And I generally like playing little cats. Come on. Give me a cat game and I'm going to go crazy for it. So you give me a cat, dog, which is disappointing. We don't got a lot of dog games. And I'm a dog person just as much as I'm a cat person. Moving on, we got Carrion, which is a game that you play like it's the opposite of a survival horror game where you get to play as the monster, the abomination, killing everyone. Again, I love survival horror games and I love any game that tries to break the mold and do something different. So, I mean, I have the Switch version. I covered the Switch version. It's not the greatest game. I didn't ultimately enjoy it, but I love the concept. And again, I like supporting indie games and I love Devolver and stuff like that. They make great games. I like supporting them. So I picked it up. And it's a PS4 version. I think that's the only way you can get the PS4 version is from Limit Run. Next one is Batoria Lost Haven. Uh, I don't know much about it, actually. I, I just saw it. I love the uh, asymmetric top-down view and stuff like that. It just... I don't know. That kind of stuff always fascinates me. Again, a lot of these games are going to look like I bought it out of FOMO. No, there was a lot of games I did not buy from Limit Runs and stuff like that. Just because it didn't interest me. I just... 
I love these smaller games. That's why I'm not really falling AAA stuff because I just I love smaller games. Now this one intrigued me, Pong Quest. Why this intrigued me is because there's a game on PlayStation One that I greatly enjoyed, and what, what was it called? It was Pong something, Pong uh, Next Level or something like that, and you. It's basically a Pong game with like quests and stuff like that. And this reminded me of it so much. And I just, I don't know. I love the kookiness. I love the idea of it. It may get boring. It looks short and simple and may not the most engaging of a game experience. But it fascinated me. I just, I love these wacky games. I love these weird games you would never find in a AAA scene. So you post these kinds of games up, I'm going to buy them. Because it's like, man, or at least if I can. Another one that fascinated me, Odane 2 Return to Dust. This one fascinated me because it has like a PS1 graphics aesthetic, which is one of my most favorite. I love PS1 graphics and I love sprite graphics. I just, I don't know what it is. It just fascinates me. I love the simplicity of it. This one intrigued me. I've heard mixed things about it. Uh, about certain uh, topics in the game and how the progression works and stuff. But again... Anytime you tell me something's indie and then I notice something small, weird about the game or something that's retro in terms of graphical style and just mechanics, it just, it draws me to it immediately. I'm just, I don't know. It's one of my easy traps you can get me with. Tandem, The Tale of Shadows is a very interesting game that I've actually been wanting to play for a while. I've actually put it up for vote on my voting system multiple times and it always failed. And it was like one of the games I wanted to win because it fascinates me. It's like a 2D survival is core puzzle game and I don't know it just it interests me I love the aesthetic look and everything like that I don't know I think it's going to be a it's insanely fun game it fascinated me every time I uh, looked at the box art and seen it maybe it's not for everyone maybe I'm just weird I just I love these kinds of weird games so I've been wanting to play that Trails of Mana this is my next one I've yet to play this one uh I just Man, finding time to play big old JRPGs is just hard nowadays. But I just, I picked up, I, I, have, all, I have pretty much all the mana games I, I could possibly get. And I've heard the really good things about this. This is a good JRPG. I'm interested if I can ever get some free time to actually sit down and, and de indulge into a JRPG of this level. I wish I could say more about it. Victor Vran, uh, Vran Overkill Edition. Which is actually fairly good. It comes with all these DLCs and expansions on the disc. And it's like a Diablo-esque style game. And one you probably should look into if you want to. Because with Diablo games requiring an internet connection. Or microtransaction, loot boxes, whatever. Or always online and stuff. And Diablo or Blizzard just butchering the uh, Diablo series. Hey, you might want to check this out. It's like a Diablo-esque style game. It can support one to two players. I believe it's offline. You can play two players with it. So I, I highly recommend looking into it. I played a little bit of it and everything like that. I think I even covered it on my channel. And it's come, like I said, it comes with all the extra content on disc. What more can you go wrong? Next one, we have Team Sonic Racing. Uh, really good game. I, I, It's a good game. It's a fun game. But it's disappointing. It's nowhere near as good as Sonic Team All Star Racing. Uh, sorry, Sonic All Star Racing Transform for the PlayStation Three and Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. That is my most favorite Go Kart Racer game ever, outclassing Mario Kart by miles. I have put so many hours in a Sonic All Star Racing Transformed, and it just this did not live up to it. It's still a good game. Don't get me wrong. It's still fun. I still enjoyed it. But man. All I want is a remaster of Sonic All Star Racing Transform. Just please give me a remaster of that game. Next one is Tim and Kuna. This one caught my attention just because I love the aesthetic of it. It's kind of like a level based kind of uh, 3D platformer where you kind of do some minor puzzles and stuff like that. And there's achievements where I go to the game at a certain time, go to the game without dying, and stuff like that. Thinking levels. I don't know. Like I said. It, uh, that's why I say that. You're going to come across these weird games that no one knows or ever heard of just because I'm just a weird person. I buy these kinds of games. And I've played this. I've played a good portion. I have yet to beat it. And I've enjoyed every single second I've played it. It's not a, a, like a deep, rich game. And it's definitely some a game you can probably see created on uh, the uh, game called Dreams just because it's such a simplistic game. But I don't know. I think you really should look into it if you like 3D platformers. Next up. We have Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. This is probably the weakest in the series of Tomb Raider games. 
But that doesn't necessarily mean this is bad. It does come with all the expansions and DLC on the disc, which again is extremely nice to see. They, which is surprising. Square Enix, they're notoriously bad at not, about not doing that. But again, it's not... It's the weakest in the three games that came out on the PlayStation 4, but it's still an insanely good game. So definitely check it out if you can, especially buying the Definitive Edition. Next one, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge Anniversary Edition. It's a beat-em-up. I've yet to actually set that and play it. I've been wanting to. I was recently going to play the first release version, but then I heard about this release, and I was like, well, I'd rather just cover this version. So I picked this up. It comes with the DLC characters and expansions on the disc. I've heard many, many good things. I remember playing the old original ones back in the day. So I'm happy to see a new iteration of it. I'm really wanting to sit down if I ever get time to play it. Prototype Biohazard Bundle. This comes with Prototype 1 and 2 on one disc. As well as the DLC and expansions on disc. I saw this and I just... Hey, you know, I love these kinds of bundles. I love these kinds of like sets and collections and stuff like that. I'm not really that interested in playing this because it's a huge open world game, but I don't know. I have always felt the prototype games were a very interesting game. Where you come, you're basically a super unstoppable thing, and I do like that change of pace where you're not like doing this progression system become unstoppable. You're immediately unstoppable, and nothing can stop you. It's very fascinating and different change of pace, which I appreciate. Tormented Souls, a game that's heavily inspired of classic Resident Evil games of like the fixed camera angles and stuff like that. So I picked it up and I did really, relatively enjoy the game. It's got some really hard puzzles and that's pretty disappointing because man, the rest of the game does flow pretty good. But you can come across some pretty hard puzzles that stops progression. This is the more updated version. The PS5 version came out first, but the PS4 version is the superior version. It runs better, works better, and it, it has better bit frame rate because the, I've heard the frame rate issues on PS5 but since this is PS4 the frame rate gets bumped up quite significantly because it's not as ha graphical fidelity and stuff like that so definitely pick up Tormented Souls if you are a fan of survival horror games and you love the classic Resident Evil style games next up we got Transformers Dev Devastation uh, I don't really know much about it I know that Platinum Games made it and I just, I love trans the classic Transformers. I remember watching it as a kid. I remember watching the Beast Wars and stuff like that on television. And I just, I saw this and I actually got it pretty cheap. This is actually a used copy. And I got it really cheap. So I was really surprised because I, I've seen it go fluctuate in price. Sometimes it's really expensive. Sometimes it's really cheap. So, I mean, you don't get too many good Transformer games and especially tie-ins like this or the classic Transformers for anyway. So that's definitely one you should look into. Again, it's from Platinum Games. Next one, we have Shadow of the Beast. This is a PlayStation exclusive. I don't know if it is anymore, but the only way you can get this is from Asia. It's a, like a like a 2D style game. It's an actually really old game. Like I think, oh man, I know it's not on NES. What's the console between that? It's like a, oh man, I can't remember. Like a, a Commodore 68 or something like that. Something like that. Where it's like this in-between console. The original one released that. And then they did like a remake. And then this one involved Sony. In which they got like exclusivity or something like that. I don't know if it's still exclusive and stuff like that. But it was a very interesting game. And I, if you get every chance and find a copy. Check it out. It's actually pretty good. Next one we have 7. The Enhanced Edition. Have yet to play it. I just know it's like a huge open world game. But it's a top down. So that intrigues me a little bit. It's not like a third person or first person kind of style game. I don't know if it's more updated. I don't really know much about it. I just picked it up because it intrigued me. And I know it's only available in the power region. Now another really good one is Signalus. Which I'm probably getting that wrong in the name. This is like a classic survival horror-esque game. Phenomenal. It is extremely good. I really enjoyed the game. It's got multiple playthroughs to get the whole story. So some might like that, some might not like it. But overall, I agree. I personally really enjoyed the game. It was a lot of fun. I've been wanting to actually run through it again. It is disappointing. This is a little outdated. I know there's an update available that adds more rooms and like expands the game a little bit. Now that's not required. You can still play the entire game on disc with no issues. But it's just disappointing that they didn't delay the physical copy just a little bit longer to make sure it's the most updated version. But still, definitely pick that game up if you're into classic survival horror games. Next one is Sifu. 
uh, I have just recently, I picked this up a while back and I was going to play it and I did play it, but I eventually came across, I could not progress. I actually had to stop playing because I was going to cover it on the channel and I just reached a certain point. I don't know if I'm just tired, stressed, I don't know. I just couldn't get past this, the, the second boss in the game. And I could barely even make it to him. You had to fight these two enemies with sticks and stuff like that. And I just, I don't know. I'm not a fighting game person. So, I mean, I just, not something I'm really into. So, maybe I'll have to come back to it. I knew that the game does have updates to make the game a little bit easier. Like difficulties and stuff like that. But on disc, there is nothing like that. It's just straight up hard. Moving on. We have... Game of the Year edition of Sekiro Shadow Dice Twice, and we have this is the Japan version, and then we have Sekiro Shadow Dice Twice, the American version. If you're curious, why do I have two versions of the game? This I I bought the multiple copies of Sekiro Shadow Dice Twice, the Game of the Year edition, whatever the U.S. version you name it. Trying to find a more updated version, and sadly there is no English version. There is the Japan version. Which the game is has the most updated. I believe there is no updates available at the time of this video. And this does come with everything. The only problem is it's only in Japanese. All the menus, all the subtitles, everything's in Japanese. Which is not a problem. If you know the game and you've played the American version, you probably could jump right to that one and have little to no problems. But I bought it because I wanted to test it. I've been wanting to test it on the channel to show you guys it. I just... Haven't got around to it. Just so many things, so many games, so many stuff I need to mess around with. Next one, we have Buddy Simulator 1984. This is another limited run game. It fascinated me because it's like a text-based adventure survival horror game. I just love these kind of weird games and it just always gets my attention. So I picked it up because it just, again, I love these weird games. They just fascinate me and I always want to buy the next one to put on my shelf. I'm just weird like that. Next one, we got Vega Knight. Uh, I played a little bit of this. This is a very fascinating, very challenging roguelike style game. And every time you progress, you unlock more stuff to be able to make your max run a little bit better. So I played a little bit of it. It's more, it's an update. I don't know if it's the fully updated version of the game, but I played a little bit of it. It's pretty good. I've been wanting to put more time into it. Next one, we got Epics of War Hammer Watch, the Heroes Edition. This comes with two games, Hammer Watch and Heroes of Hammer Watch, the Ultimate Edition. This is, again, it's it's like a sprite graphics kind of style game. I don't know. It just fascinated me. I'm just, again, I always buy these weird stuff. I'm always looking for them. Next one, we have Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. I've been wanting to play this one. I've heard it's actually a f extremely good 2D kind of uh, style game uh, with some kind of 3D up uh, top-down view look and appearance. I haven't played it, but I, I played the original one, the original Ukulele. It is eh, but I've heard very good ones uh, things about this one. I've been wanting to check it out. Next one, we have Cube, the 10th Anniversary Edition. This is another Limit Run game. It's a puzzle 2D kind of, uh, not 2D, but first-person style game. I, it's, it's a lot like Portal, if you will. I'm not going to say it is Portal, but it's like the solving puzzles and stuff like that and, and a first-person style game. I don't know. Intrigued me, so I picked it up. Moving on. We got Ukulele. This is the original one, the first main. I don't know. It's okay. It's an okay top-down or uh, 3D platform. I'm talking for so long and so it's short span and it's I'm, st I'm jumbling over my words and stuff. I, mean, I don't know. It's not the most amazing, but it's not necessarily a bad game either. Moving on, we got Kambonora. I played a little bit of this. Seizure warning with this game. Boy, oh boy, I played a little bit of it. And I'm, like, I'm like, oh my lord. So just bear that in mind. If you have problems with a uh, good amount of colors being flashed at you, do not play, play this game. I I played a little bit of it, and I was like, okay. I definitely would have, if I'm going to cover this game at some point, I'm going to have to put a seizure warning on that one. Redemption of Reapers. This one I'm fascinated because I mean, it's, it's a tactical turn-based kind of style game. And I just, I love those kinds of games. So I saw this one, I picked it up. This is the limited run version of the game. I know there's like a Japan or Asia version. I do believe it supports English. So if you didn't pick up the limit run, you might want to check that one out. Well, this one may be more updated compared to the Asia or Japan one. I'm not entirely sure, but wanting to mess around with that one. Again, I love those kind of tactical turn-based kind of style games. 
Moving on, we had Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 Remaster. They say it's remastered, but it's remake. I, I, I Activision being dumb there. Again, these were really fun games. I remember playing the PlayStation 1 versions of these games. Tons of fun. And I haven't picked a PS5 version of yet. I don't know if there's any reason. Do not worry about the whole re uh, requires content download. The whole game can be played completely offline with an Arista account. The whole game is on disc. You do not need to download anything. The only thing you're downloading is like ladder boards and stuff like that. That's the only thing I think you're downloading from that. If I recall, because I remember playing the entire game. Again, I play all my games completely offline. I never connect the internet with my consoles. So I know this a fact. This, this has the whole game on disc. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Trails Fusion. I love these kinds of style games where it's just like this balance beam kind of style game where you're trying to not fall off and you're trying to do weird stunts there is a uh, this is actually from the possum maxima condition I, I bought that one and it didn't actually have the content on disc it was like a power import so i was like ah, i just tra traded that one off and i preferred the case of this one so i kept it but i kept the book and everything like that up from the other first release i don't know i like these, i like the game it's a very interesting kind of style game we got transistor this is a limit run game. Another game I have yet to sit down and have a chance to play. It looks fascinating. It's like a like a I don't know. I can't really say. I played a little bit of it, but can't now. I now that I think about it, I can't quite remember. It's been a while. I haven't yet to play it, but I like those weird games, so I always buy another one. Next one is Power Slave Exhumed. I did recently cover this one. This is a boomer shooter style game. I enjoyed the game quite significantly. It has its ups and downs, and it has some annoying audio moments and stuff like that but overall great time but again i'm biased i am a boomer shooter fanatic so if you tell me a boomer shooter metrovania survival horror some kind of turn-based tactical game I'm, I'm gonna gobble that all up so again i had fun with this one moving this one this is a recently new pickup it is konosoba god's blessing on the wonderful world uh, love the love for these clothes of desire. I, it's like a visual novel kind of style game. I love the anime Konosoba, so I was really intrigued in playing the one of the. There is several games out there. This is not the first game of Konosoba, but this is the first one to actually have English. Now I bought the American version, but they sent me the PAL version. I do believe there is American version. I don't know how many copies they made of the American version, but they sent me a PAL version. It's whatever. I've been. I've been wanting to mess around with it. I do enjoy visual novels, so I'll get around to playing it at some point. Next one is Bro Force Deluxe Edition. Includes Bro Force Forever update. This is uh, another kind of weird, kind of 2D sprite graphic kind of game. I know that, um, uh, what is it? Uh, another company, Limit Run Company. Not Limited Run, but another one. I think it was called Special Reserve Games. Did a physical copy for this. Now, I'm glad I almost bought it, but I'm glad I did it. And because I was like, I was half and half of whether I want to buy it, and then now they released a wide release that's actually more updated than compared to the special reserve version. So I'm glad I didn't because this is the superior version right now at the time of this video. I played a little bit of it, I seems interesting, just need to get around to playing it. The last one from my 60 plus 60 stack is Train Valley Collection, it's kind of like a management system kind of game where you it's a management puzzle kind of strategy kind of game i played a little bit of it and the controls are not the greatest it's clearly just uh, a basic port from the pc version with basic control support this does come with quite updates and stuff like that on disc. It comes with some DLC and stuff like that on disc. I don't know if it comes with everything. But with little as I play with it, it seems interesting. And I love these kind of style management, resource management, and like city buildings and stuff like that. I just, I love these kinds of weird games. Games that are very slow paced and stuff like that. But anyway, that's it. This is my first 60 stack. We have several more to go. I Again, away, this is, I have a 700 plus uh, collection of PlayStation 4 games, and this is my first stack row. So thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it, and I covered about, <laughs> I got more to cover. So if you want to stick around and see more, uh, I'll try to post more videos when I can. So again, thank you for watching this, and I'll see you in my next part if you check it out. Bye-bye!